Hello everybody, welcome back once again to the Lord of the Rings, the Third Age walkthrough. We are, oddly enough, still in Moria. <laughs> this place is massive. Looks like we've got a... Triggered for, ah yeah. Goblins coming out from underground. Little goblin tunnels. Alright, what do we have here? Ah. Just a caster and two archers. Nothing fancy here. <clears throat> All right. Start out with a healthy dose of crippling smash. It's just what the doctor ordered. Expected I would have uh, slept one of the archers first, but whatever. Tossing the buffs out as per usual. Mm, okay. Yeah, again, kind of strange choice of skills here. What? That's not good. I missed it. I've got company valor already on. Yeah, really, really weird choice of skills here. There's might too. And I, uh, so obviously I buffed out of order. Again, I don't really like to buff this way. I like valor, might, and then fellowship grace. And I think it I guess it took me a little bit to, to really get that down to how I liked it. Or I suppose to develop that order. <laughs> Ooh, okay. Yeah, again, I don't know. It's kind of weird choice of skill for me. I normally wouldn't. Uh, I really don't like the arrow that much. It's just got a really long good one time. It's uh, obviously fairly potent there. But yeah, you can see now uh, Elagos won't be getting a turn for quite some time now. Uh, and that's kind of how you have to... <clears throat> excuse me, that's kind of how you have to... I don't know, prioritize what skill you're using. You have to remember that... Sometimes the, the really hard-hitting skills, yeah, they're, they're great and they do a lot of damage, but a lot of times they've got a really long cooldown time. And so if you don't finish off an enemy or help help you if you, uh, it's even worse if you miss something like that because then you don't get any of the damage and you still have the long cooldown time. So um, <clears throat> sometimes incremental damage is better. You know, than those massive, massive hits, because those ones are usually the ones that take a lot of, a lot of time to, to recharge. Uh, anyways, yeah, it looks like the, the fight is well under control, though, and it's time to, uh, I guess it's time to craft some items. Uh, and I don't, okay, yeah, so this must be where I have Idriel come in. And finish this guy off. Yep. All right. Cool. So that's that. Next. Moving on. Nothing to see here. <coughs> All right. Got a little bit of a cracked elf stone of fire protection. Uh, those. I don't know. They're okay. I think they give you a plus one to your strength. Uh, Idril is really the only one that <coughs> I believe needs fire protection at all. And uh, I know she does get a couple of of uh, pendants that'll, that'll Leave give this you place, some fire protection. Of shadow. Uh, 
The creature draws power from that altar. He will be difficult to deal with. Alrighty, what do we have here? Caster, I see definitely one dual wielder and uh, one chumpy dude that we don't really have to worry about. Uh, so obviously, you're going to want to sleep or neutralize the dual wielder, which is that guy, I think. Nope, I picked the wrong dude. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I picked the wrong guy. So, whoops. My bad. I think that uh, when I when I looked at them, some, for some reason, they, they kind of look similar to me, and maybe that's just me being bad. But uh, that one on the right, as we're looking at him, is not the, is not the threat. It's the guy on the left. That guy. So I guess, luckily, he didn't. He didn't decide to hit me with uh, And endurance of Uden. I'm not sure which which buff that actually is. And uh, I don't believe you ever get a character that. Or, you know, I don't, I don't ever believe you get to play one of these guys as the, uh, or in the evil mode, so I'm just not really sure what that does. Endurance of Uden makes me believe that maybe it's a fire resistance buff. That kind of seems like that would be appropriate. Hard to say, though. Anyways. Uh, Loudwater, unfortunately, Loudwater Fury did not take that enemy out. Uh, really cranked him pretty good, though. But, uh... Alright, here we go. Here's it. It's a creep on the right. <laughs> I think we go flash that. <laughs> Should've said it. Yeah. Alright, Inferno of Uden. Fun. Okay, that hits pretty hard. Uh, unfortunately, with um, with Load Up Water Fury not taking that guy out, then that makes you know, Idriel's cooldown time really long. But that's okay. Nice. Royal Grace is really doing a ton of work here. How about this one? Is this thing gonna do it? Nope. Oh my gosh, he must have just a sliver left. That's a shame. And then he whiffs big time. Womp womp, way to go. Well, that's my dexterity for ya. Alright, put this guy back to sleep. Sleep. Good old Pelagost. He's fairly, uh... <laughs> really war call this is a really bad idea so I'm betting this is gonna somebody's gonna finish off one of them and then I'm gonna wake up the other one yep that's exactly how this is gonna go down so that was all really bad choice of skills there yeah all right so now this guy's awake even though I literally just put him to sleep <laughs> okay oh wait a minute that guy looked like he was dual wielding too. Okay. Yeah, I was. I'm crazy, man. Okay, so. Oh, I think I know what happened there. I was looking at the portraits at the top and or at the on the side of the screen, and I think I mistook the uh, the shaman or the the caster guy as one of the other uh, melee guys. You know, the ones that uh, the ones that don't have obviously they don't they don't dual wield and. Uh, so yeah, so uh, I, I actually did sleep the correct target right off the bat. It, it does appear to be, yeah, look at, yeah, they're both dual wielding. So that's my bad. I guess I was, <laughs> I was playing a little better than I thought. Yeah, okay. So there you go. Endurance of Uden must be uh, uh, some sort of flame resistance buff because now these guys are immune and they're not normally immune uh, to flame, flame attack, so. Well, there you go. That answers that question, too. So, <clears throat> anyways, if you're here and they use that, make sure you don't use flaming fury. 
because you will just waste your AP. Alright. Alright, looks like we're bringing in Hadhod to... I don't know. Say buffing Hadhod. We brought him in a little bit ago. Buffing him to maybe, I don't know, cripple something. That's my guess. The, uh, the fight is obviously well under control and basically over. Uh, so one thing I do actually want to mention too now is that, uh, so I've, I've mentioned a couple of times about when you wake enemies up you want to use something like a, you know, a crippling crippling blow. The only thing with that is um, if you do use a crippling blow, like you can see what just happened there is uh, the enemies like this uh, can <clears throat> excuse me get a counter attack. And uh, instead if you were to use a, uh, a, a, an ability that can stun an enemy, they will not be able to counter. And that's probably the biggest uh, biggest difference between uh, like crippling, crippling type uh, abilities and uh, and stun type abilities is uh, you know with the stuns you won't be you won't be countered. Now <clears throat> that being said, it seemed to me that there's a lot more enemies that are resistant to stun uh, than slow, but um, that's not always the case. So again, there are certain times where it's I, I you know I feel like it's definitely uh, more beneficial to use a a stunning type attack to wake something up. And look at that thing. That is just hideous. Alright. Um, what are we doing here? I guess looking at all the different shields. I think I was considering putting the old one back on. Because <laughs> this one's so hideous. I don't know. Huh. I guess I did use it. Anyways. Alright, what else we have here? Uh, some armor for Elagost. And Hadhod is going to get a bunch of spirit. Alright. Cool. Battle hardened armor. Face to the Valor. Sleep Valley. Increased armor. Looks good. Passives look good. Look like we're on the right, we're on the right path. All right, let's keep moving. Let's keep exploring. There are a bunch of rooms down here that you'll want to uh, th uh, search thoroughly, I suppose I could say. And oh, all right, we got a surprise. Where were these guys where, when we were fighting their buddies? Just chilling, guarding this treasure chest. It must be really awesome, I guess. <laughs> We'll see. It'll end up being like a king's foil. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Crits. Nice. Take that. How do you like me now? Unfortunately, Barathor didn't get his turn first, so, um, you know, luckily, Elagost and Hadhod actually connected for a change. Well, I shouldn't say that. Elagost is pretty... I don't know. I mean, yeah, his dex is okay still. Oh, well, there you go. So there's... Valor's on him, and he still managed to mist. Mist? Did I just say mist? I meant miss. And look at that shield. Man, it's so horrible looking. <laughs> It's like if you ripped off a chunk of Sauron's helmet and then like, I don't know, made it really big, enlarged it, grew it in some sort of helmet growing device. I don't know. I got nothing. I'm so lame. 
Anyways, enough smack talk on the shield, right? It looks like it would be something that a, you know, an orc might use. So, okay, I'll take it. We'll appropriate it. Put it to good use. Look at that fellowship grace. Oh my gosh. That's that wonderful combination of might and grace together. Back to my old crafting shenanigans. <laughs> Ooh, alright. Well, that's a change. Normally I wouldn't swap Idriel in uh, on, uh, for Barathor's position. Uh, and again, now that'll. <clears throat> that'll maybe actually I should say I, I kind of started doing that a little bit a little bit I don't know some somewhere here in Moria I guess it, it must not be too much farther it's not like we have a whole lot of Moria left so. God so many misses it's so depressing <laughs> poor head <Hadhod. coughs> Shot, cripple that dude. Boom. I really like loud water fury. I don't like the view stem on it, but hey, you know what? I'm okay with that. It just does so much damage. Why am I waking up, dudes? Oh, okay, that yeah, one's done. Some AP back. No big deal. NBD. Oh, finish it. I knew it. <laughs> finish this off with that word. We go out with a bang. Oh, no! Oh, poor Elagast. He had his moment there, and he just couldn't quite kill the beast. <laughs> I don't know, I got nothing. Uh, so there you have Hadhod. Did he use a Lembus there? Was that a Lembus, or was that a Yeah, it was a Lembus. Had to be. And, uh... As a perfect example of pairing up company might with items and making them more effective. Normally, uh, Alembus wouldn't restore that much AP. So, to sum that all up, company might makes everything better. <laughs> Ow! Womp womp! Drops of Valinor. That's a horrible reward for that fight, but okay. You know what? It is what it is. And I don't remember if there's an item in here or not, but hopefully we get something from this fight. That would be nice, huh? And alright, so you got two dual wielders and a caster. So this is actually kind of a, a tougher fight. Uh, not sure if Company Valor was the wisest decision right there. Um, stand fast probably would have made more sense off the bat. Uh, it wouldn't have been so bad if Elagost would have got a turn in here before these two get theirs. I feel like then it probably would have been okay still. Uh, because Had Hoss, Had Hod, sorry, could have crippled one and uh, Elagost could have put the other to sleep. But. Again, that's not how it all turned out. Luckily enough for me, uh, neither of them used their stunning strike. So, so yeah, everything turned out okay. These guys know all about the flames of Udin. Alright, let's see what uh, 
see how comp company resistance does here. I don't know how this compares in uh, or to uh, Adhod's flame resistance buff. I'm not really sure. I don't know if it's as good or if it's not as good or what the story is. But not. All right, so I obviously didn't use uh, my buffs in the right order, though. I don't think that I should have used Grace right there. Might would have been a better choice first, and then Grace after, but... <clears throat> well, that's neither here nor there. Yeah, I should have just reversed these two. I definitely got better at that as the game went on, but... We'll see. I would su I would suspect in the next two or three videos that I'll get kind of straightened out and I kind of had a <laughs> a standard buffing order. And who needs Idriel when you've got Fellowship, or sorry, Royal Grace? All right, another interesting choice with the cleaving. <laughs> oh yeah. Nice. That's kind of, mm, I don't know if I'd say rare, but maybe satisfying? But he died with the bleed effect on cleaving wood? Or wood. Did I say cleaving wood? <laughs> womp womp. Cleaving wound. Words are hard. English is super difficult for me. Anyways. Alright, so, uh, <clears throat> it looks like, uh, Fellowship Grace is keeping us very comfortable uh, in the AP department. Oh, dodged. What? Uh, and I think here I was still under the impression that uh, Valor could wear off, but again, it doesn't. All right, <clears throat> so we're bringing in Idril. A little loud water fury, cripple. I would bet I will continue crafting as well. There we go. Um, <clears throat> I know that can get a that can get a little annoying, um, but I assure you, I didn't craft forever. Every once in a while, you know, in a random, or I should say, at a certain point, I kind of just stopped crafting for the commentary. Like, I, I did a little bit of crafting maybe off screen, um, but, you know, for the most part, I kept the crafting to an absolute minimum for the actual, like, commentary fights. And, uh, yeah, I mean, every, maybe every once in a while it may happen here or there, but. That's that's usually when I I'm doing so well in a fight or everything is under control and I literally just don't don't have much else to do with uh, with Barathor. Uh, but again, that that becomes less and less frequent, uh, especially towards the end or at basically at the end of Moria. That's really where that ends essentially, and uh, unfortunately, that just means that for the first. These first videos, these first probably, I don't know, 12, 12 videos or so, uh, kind of drag on a little bit, but these fights just take a little bit longer than they, they probably should have. Uh, but, you know, again, that, uh, that doesn't last forever, and it will, it will definitely pick up, pick up quite a bit. All right. Nice. <clears throat> and did I see that? Did I miss? Did I miss putting some stat points onto him? I must have. Look at that spirit and speed. So nice. <laughs> well, her, everybody, her, everyone's strength is pretty crappy, though. So that's the other thing. You'll notice that, uh, you know, my, my spirit... 
it looks really good and the speed looks really good, but they don't, it doesn't do, or none of my characters really do a whole lot with their, like, physical based attacks right now. <coughs> and, uh, that's just, again, that's the, that's the builds. I'd say it gets a little bit better later, but I don't know. I don't know that it really does. <laughs> Uh, I, I will say, though, however, that after, oh boy, I'm trying to think exactly where, but, um, well, there's, anyways, there's a certain point here, it's actually probably, probably right after Moria, where uh, the damage really starts to pick up, too, but, um, not, not necessarily the physical damage, but, uh, that's where I get some more Basically, at the end of Moria, here we'll get a we'll get a an elf stone of I think it's Fell Shadow or something like that. I think that's the name of it, and uh, it basically gives your characters a whole a whole new skill tree. And uh, anybody can learn. The crazy thing is anybody can learn those skills, and uh, there there's some really devastating skills in that in that uh, skill set. And uh, and then on top of that. You get you you can learn the skills incredibly fast, so um, you know it, it may seem daunting at first when you when you look and say, oh my gosh, you know there's this is a whole new skill tree, and look at this pendant. This pendant is amazing. I love this thing. Well, I kind of like it. <laughs> uh, we'll see if I actually equip that. Ah, uh, yeah, I'm. I don't know. That's a toss up. Um, it. It's one less dex, which I really don't like, but uh, it should give him, it'll give him a bit more uh, AP, and then I like the speed. So yeah, oh, that's that's why I chose that, essentially, was really because of the speed. Uh, <clears throat> at the beginning, or the, this area in the game, Elagos does seem to be lacking a bit on the AP as well, that, but that's mostly because his skills, it's not really that he's lacking in AP, it's more because his skills are just extremely expensive. So it's nice to have a you know a little boost in in the AP there too, it, albeit temporary boost in AP. And here I don't know I'm running around in circles. I got kind of lost and I'm not 100% sure if I explored all these areas yet. Let's hope so though, right? Yeah, it looks good. Looks like we have. Yeah, all right. Let's continue on. All righty. Their war drums must be silenced. We must attack them at range. And quickly. The longer we wait, the more goblins it shall be called. <laughs> okay. So that's the goblin drummer. If it wasn't completely obvious by the gigantic drum that he's standing next to and the drumsticks in his hands. <laughs> Anyhow. We gotta kill that guy. Uh, and I was kind of just poking around here to see if there were any uh, treasure chests that I don't want to miss it. But, uh, we can really, we'll be able to explore this area thoroughly here in a bit after we chop through a couple of these goblins. Uh, all right. So what do we have here? A vet and an archer. Yeah. So nothing new, nothing fancy. Should be, should be a pretty quick fight. Although I'm sure I'll be able to stretch it out into you know a half an hour somehow, because that's how I roll. <laughs> Let's hope not, huh? <clears throat> we got we got places to go and drummers to kill. Can't be hanging out with these archers and veterans all day. You know, for a dude that uh, has a shield, he literally never blocks anything. Maybe that'd be a little overpowered, huh? Being that, what is it only? Is it two characters? I think it's two characters. 
Have a shield. Spoilers. Womp womp. That's why I'm just the worst. <clears throat> right. Let's cripple some dudes. There's a nice rise and shine. Crippling arrow to the face. I mean, let's be honest, he had it coming. Yeah, alright, looks like I'm not wasting much time at all with this fight. That's a refreshing change of pace, huh? Boom! Nighty night. It's gotta be some sort of record for me. Did I even craft anything? Let's just hope that continues, although I suspect that it won't. Alright. This is troll number three, I think. And is there another dude here, or is it literally just a troll? How lame would that be? Alright. Looks like I'm gonna haste. Adriel, this is completely not needed, but oh well, whatever. Valor, good start. Good strong, good solid start. Again, other than the haste, I really didn't feel like that was needed at all. And, I don't know. I think it was a little while before I realized that these guys were uh, vulnerable to the paralyzing shot. Uh, that's not to say that crippling shot's a, a bad move by any means. It's, it's fine. It's just uh, uh, the crippling. The crippling shot, uh, or sorry, the paralyzing shot works on them extremely well. <clears throat> Wounding yeah. strike, not a, oh yeah, that's a good, that's a good uh, ability there. Um, so it looks to me like wounding strike is doing exactly the amount of damage that it initially deals. Um, which I'm, I'm kind of wondering if, if that would increase then if I was to use. Um, company might first, and I guess I had never thought about that until just this very moment, but I would sure think so. I mean, maybe I'll have to try that out. Alright. Stacking the wounds on this guy. Now, we'll have to see here if, uh, if Idriel's wound ticks again now here, too. Or if she actually has to be on the screen. Because I don't think so. I think that... Yep, there it is. Wounding Strike. Awesome. I think, right? Yeah. And his is called Cleaving Wound. Alright. Um... Do it. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, so this guy's done. There's literally nothing else he can do now. You know, not only can you lock him down with Crippling Strike, but that paralyzing shot that just... Uh, you know, essentially, that, that lasts about as long, I believe, as sleep, so I guess technically, yeah, he could... You know, or he could uh, eventually wear off, but it doesn't, or it's not going to. It'll He'll probably be dead first. Uh, that being said, though, again, I you know I mentioned it earlier or in one of the other videos too. But uh, <laughs> oh, nice! Cleaving one finishes him off. Uh, but anyways, his uh, his paralyzing shot does take uh, or has a longer cooldown time. Though, so I guess just be aware of that. All right. <clears throat> uh, level four was that Hadhod? Troll three of nine. Let's buff up that spirit. Alrighty. Man, it's crazy how much company might affects uh, the items in this game. It's, it's just nuts. 
It's almost like I should I should find out the exact percentage, but I bet it's it's at least twice as powerful. All right. Anyways, we've got a big fight here. So uh, we've got the drummer in the back, and what's up front? It looks like a vet. Target here? I'm not sure. Looks like it. Yeah, alright, so that's the vet. <clears throat> or is there two vets? Yeah, it looks like there's two vets actually. Uh, so here was another roll of the dice. I mean, in all honesty, I should have just used stand fast. Although, okay. Had Hod got a turn first, so I guess I was counting on him actually landing. Um, so, I don't worry too much about Flames of Eden. I mean, I kind of do. It, it, it is a damaging attack. Look at that. Hadhod's got really strong fire defense, though, so that, that makes that not such a big deal. Anyways, I, I guess I'm much more worried about stun stun attacks than I am about, uh, about Flame of Odin. So, typically, that's how you'll see all these, these fights play out. You know, I'll sleep or cripple uh, the... The guys that can stun, and then I'll just absorb the damage from Uden. Yeah, look at this. 153? Really? Oh, what happened here, though? This guy got... This guy got free somehow. What's going on there, buddy? Yeah, so now he's stunned. Womp womp. So, I don't know. I guess in hindsight, I would have... It would have maybe made more sense to do... To do stand fast first. Again, I'm not really sure what happened there, though. Hadhod should have gotten another attack, so... I don't know if I, I looked away here for a second and missed what actually happened, but... Uh, he should have been... Honestly, he should have been locked down. So he either missed or I... swung at the wrong dude. Something to that effect. Alright. Company Might's going up. <coughs> Me. Sorry if you hear me cough a lot, it's kind of a bad time of the year for me, so my lungs tend to get a little out of control. Alright. Yeah, look at this. Be more pathetic, you turd. Alright. <laughs> so mean. So mean to these goblins. All right, there's a good plan. Haste up Elagast. Why not? You can keep dude slept, right? Uh, usually I would suggest hasting Idriel herself first, and then haste, you know, your other characters, but for whatever reason, I didn't. Oh. Well, at least she connected a little bit there. Aim shot. Alright. Alright. Now what? I feel like I should be crippling this dude. Yeah. Oh, okay. We're gonna finish him off anyway. Probably something a little bit cheaper would have been an okay. Alright. I don't know how, uh... Okay, yeah, that looks like that's a fairly quick uh, reuse time on training shot. I'm kind of surprised, actually. Oh, well, he's wasted now, too, though, so I guess it's kind of difficult to tell. Uh, the timing on this, or on, you know, some skills now. Anyways. Uh, back to sleep. Oh, I'm, okay. I was crafting. I thought I used that. I was like, why am I using old Toby? Everybody's like basically full. But I was crafting it, so. Alright, there you go. So there's a, a wake up with a stun. So now again, uh, the cool thing about that is I, you know, on the initial hit, I wouldn't, uh, or that, that thing wouldn't have the, the option of counterattacking. Uh, whereas, you know, if I would have woke it up with a with a crippling strike from, or sorry, a crippling smash from Hadhod, it potentially could have counterattacked. Would it have made? Or, or would it have destroyed me? No, but 
you know, it's a thing. It's a tactic. It's something to consider. Alright. So what happened there? This guy got loose too. Man, this is what happened. I look away, so I'm trying to... Trying to level up dudes and, and actually play at the same time and or, uh, and do commentary at the same time. Sometimes it's uh, probably not the wisest idea. All right, now that we have this guy alone, uh, I don't think war call is a good idea necessarily here. Yeah, okay, so, um, uh, War Call would have made, would have made Idril use her melee attack, so, uh, being that, oh my god, ah, this is the worst, I probably should have, no, I don't know, I don't know how much, uh, Barith or, or, sorry, uh, Hadhad could have done with his Flaming Fury, uh, but maybe it would have been a better idea to use or to bring him in. I don't know. That's a that's a tough call. Maybe I was just kind of screwed. Anyways, long story short, we gotta kill the drummer. Otherwise, he just keeps summoning, summoning these dudes, which uh, I guess wouldn't be such a bad leveling opportunity, as well as you know a good good opportunity to learn skills. So, uh, your call, uh, typically I don't like to, I don't sit here and level here, but, um, again, it's not a bad, it's not a bad idea. Crippling shot, alright. And, uh, the other, you know, I don't know, it's kind of a unique opportunity, though, because the cool thing about this is... You know, if you just run around and do the random battles back to back or over and over, the the crummy thing about doing it that way is you're constantly buffing your guys, and you know it can get a little well, I don't know, it can get a little old butt. Uh, here, being that you you know you won't be leaving combat, your buffs will stay active, so you don't have to keep doing like redundant buffs. But uh, yeah. Anyways, what? Stop missing. I don't know if she's got Valor on or not, but I guess I don't expect much out of her anyway when it comes to melee attacks, so it's probably not the end of the world that she's missing a little. Maybe not. Okay. Oh yeah, he's got he's got a ton of life left. Okay, or not. I'm crazy. I'm losing it here. So uh, again, not a really good idea to uh, finish off. <laughs> so I used I used uh, Idril and then Elagost right after. That was a bad choice. Uh, what I should have done was. Finish off the goblin with Barathor, and then I would have had Idril and Elagost able to take actions. Now, obviously, it didn't matter because Warcall just made Elagost attack him, so it was fine. But I'm kind of curious what would happen if you had Idril and Hadhod in there, and then you used Warcall. Or if it just doesn't even let you. It probably grays it out because I don't think either of those two have a long-ranged attack. So I'm betting that it doesn't do anything. So, well, it either makes you waste your AP on nothing or it, um, you know, it grays out the option so you can't even try it. I'm kind of curious. Now I wish I would have tried that. Hey, if you're watching this, you should try it out and let me know how it goes. This is for science, it's for research. We need we need to know these things. <laughs> All 
I don't know. I got nothing. Anyways, all right. So there's the there's the spot that we popped out of, and uh, you can kind of go up here. I totally wanted to to pound on this drum, but I didn't have any drumsticks on me, so oh well. I guess better luck next time. I can't find that goblin's body that had him either. Oh well. Leaf of Old Toby. Toby. Alright. Mm, some junk items. Is there really not anything else up here? Oh, and that's the area that we came from. So that's, uh, that's like the goblin idol or whatever it is down there. And then I believe this is the path to continue on. So I think I've explored everything. And yeah, unfortunately there weren't any really cool items up here. It was just the, the one treasure chest. How lame is that? Although I guess we did get that, what was it, a piece of armor for Barathor. So I guess that's something. We're not walking out of here empty handed, that's for sure. That would be unacceptable. Anyway, we gotta cut this here, so I uh, hope you guys are enjoying the uh, guides, and stay tuned for more. Alright, thanks for watching.